Mr. Will last week, so I said hell. There you go. Yeah, I thought you'd be celebrating this week. You had, you had that 12. Oh, no, bro, no. I'll celebrate the end of the season. Look, look, <laughs> look, look, look. I'm going to celebrate for him. <laughs>
Yeah, Howard is done for the year, they saying, man. That's a damn shame. That hurts because, you know, they were talking about trading him and cutting him, and he rolls up, man. That, that, this is a, probably one of his better years playing with Brady. But uh, I think, was it, God, good, good, was it Godwin? Godwin is uh, hurting. Everybody's hurting. Mike Evans is hurt, but uh, they're going to find a way, man. Mike Evans had his ankle messed up, but he's still catching a lot of balls. So, uh, nah, Chicago, I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, you tried to get me to do it last week, Puma. You feeling confident about them, about them Bears. Tried to warn you. You didn't heed the advice. I wasn't confident. I, I sure wasn't confident. But but I, I I couldn't do it. I appreciate you though do, doing that. But uh, I'm a roll with Tampa this. <laughs> uh, Pop is going with Tampa Bay. I got to go with Tampa Bay too. Uh, it seems like the chemistry is forming in, in Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. and. Um, I just can't see. It was, Chicago's making too many mistakes defensively last week against Indianapolis. And um, even though the score was 19-11, uh, to 11, it just didn't seem that close the way the Bears were playing. So it was uh, Tampa Bay across the board. Uh, next game should be an interesting game. Um, Houston's coach is fired. And um, Jacksonville is going into Houston. Black, who you got? I'm thinking of Texas, man, because it seems to me – I was reading something that they were saying now – he wanted more input in the defense. He got in an argument with J.J. Watt. And there's, it just that team no longer wanted him there. They just – they were just – they wanted him out, bro. Like I said earlier on the other show, when I read what J.J. Watt said, a change has to come. Yeah, when, you're, when your leaders start to turn on you and they go to ownership, uh, ownership starts to hear that, you got to do something. I'm amazed. I heard some commentators want to pick on Watson. He's not having a great season. Watson didn't trade away Hopkins. He didn't do it, bro. So you, you, you can try to pick on him all you want. He didn't trade him away. That was Bill O'Brien. I think just the mere fact that he's gone, man, I think they were playing inspired. Jacksonville, to me, will probably stumble a little bit, so I'm taking the Texans at home. All right. Ice, who you got? Yeah, Romeo Cornell, I mean, if nothing else, he can get to rah-rah. All you really need him is rah-rah for about a week or two, get back on track. They're 0-4. They need to win bad, um, as you mentioned. Uh, everybody knows that was a horrible trade with, with Hopkins. That was horrible. Hopkins is like one of the leading receivers in the whole daggone league right now, and you couldn't use him. But uh, with all that being said, I'm going to finally – I hope they – I think I've chosen them three times so far. They let me down, but I'm going to roll with Houston this week again. All right. Pop is going with Houston. Uh, I'm going to go with Jacksonville. I'm going to go with Jacksonville. You can rah-rah all you want. They got some issues on that team, and uh, I don't know – um, I don't care what coach you bring in, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That offensive line is a little shaky. Uh, Watt and that defense, they ain't bringing it. Give me Jacksonville. Give me Minshew. I, I got to ask, I, what are you drinking, bro? What are you drinking? You <laughs> strong enough. It ain't strong, it ain't strong enough. <laughs> I don't that big. It ain't strong enough. This is just Heineken, a beer. Um, they not the sponsors, I'm sorry. It's just a regular beer. But, uh, no, nah, it ain't strong enough after that pick. Anyway. Nah, I'm going with Jacksonville. <laughs> I'm sorry. Houston ain't showing me anything all this year. I'm sorry. They're 0-4, too? No. Nah. No. Nah. Uh, Cincinnati and Baltimore, Black, who you got? i tell you what, man. Win or lose, your pick always amuses me because I got to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> your rationale just... <laughs> I mean, they're 0-4. What, what else can they say? They're 0-4. Coach. I'm not knocking your pick. They ain't executing. Bro, <laughs> you make your own way, bro. I admire you. You make your own way. <laughs> rah, rah. <laughs> you should get him up to. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I can't get you to play. A coach, a, a, a big fat coach ain't going to get you to rah, rah to go up there and get. No. No, prove to me you can win. I'll just say this, man. Houston, it wasn't like they were getting blown out of games, bro. Realistically, they were in that Steelers game. They was kind of in this. They could have won this game here if homeboy would have put the ball away that last touchdown, put it away so they hit the ground. They would have been in that game against Minnesota. Now they should have done better, granted, but they're not that far. Off. I'm sorry. Who you say playing a game, man? I got a little. I got you know the laugh to kind of take me away, bro. I'm sorry. Cincinnati against Baltimore. This Baltimore. <laughs> um, you know, I love what Cincinnati's doing. I see them coming. I don't think it's going to be enough against the Ravens. I just don't think it's going to be enough. If Ravens, if this game's in Cincinnati, I might, it'll be a little tougher, but 
The Ravens are trying to prove something because they, you know, they won last week, but they got abused against Kansas City, bro, and they still got to find them. So they got to find their confidence back. This is a weekend I think they're going to try to do that. So I see Cincinnati coming, but they're not strong enough yet to take down the Ravens in Baltimore. I'm going to take the Ravens. All right. All right, so you got? Yeah, the Ravens are trying to put put that ship back where it needs to be uh, from the standpoint of they're, they were using a bunch of uh, – running backs by committee early on. Now they're starting to tighten it up and go stri strictly with Mark Ingram. So um, I'm going to go with Baltimore. I think they're turning the corner a little bit and uh, getting ready because they know if they have another matchup down the line with KC, they need to improve. All right. Papa's going with Baltimore. I'm going with Baltimore too. They said that uh, Lamar Jackson um, didn't practice today. He's been a little banged up. But uh, I think he'll be ready to play. And um, Cincinnati had a good week last week. Joe Burrow. Got his first win, but uh, it's going to be hard to win in that division this year, Baltimore. Next game is the Los Angeles Rams versus Washington. Uh, I said last week that I read an article they were going to sit the quarterback down. They did. They put him at third string, third string. So maybe it for him. I'm not sure uh, what Ron is seeing that we're not seeing. But he put him behind um, Alex Smith, who was the second string. And Alex Smith is just getting back from that leg injury he was out two years ago. So, Black, who you got? Yeah, I, I, you know, I said this before the season started, or well, the first game of the season. Haskins has not has shown any growth. But I think what's going to happen at the end of this year, man, you're going to see a lot of quarterbacks, Haskins, a quarterback for the Giants possible, and some other young quarterbacks. We were talking about Donald earlier. They're not going to be starting next year, bro. They're just not going to be starting because they, they've been given a chance and opportunities, and they haven't, just haven't been delivered. And the NFL now is a league where you got to come in in a certain amount of time. you got to have an impact, bro. You look at Burroughs. You got to have an impact. You got to be able to come. You look up the the, the the quarterback in Arizona. You got to have an impact. And if you can't, nobody's sitting around waiting for it to develop three or four or five years down the road. So, with them, um, that being said, I think. Um, damn, I keep forgetting who's playing, bro. <laughs> who's playing? Who you drinking on, man? <laughs> you said you ain't drinking. You said that was red Kool Aid. No, bro, this is red Kool Aid. I'm sorry. <laughs> Los Angeles Rams in Washington. Look at ice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the Rams, but I'm not surprised that the – what's the name is making up? I thought he was going to make the, the, the switch last week. He really didn't. Um, with Haskins, to the quarterback that he had in, in Carolina. That quarterback can play, man. I think he's going to inspire the team a little bit. It's not going to be enough to beat the Rams because the Rams are kind of tough, but they're not what they used to be. But they're going to be tough enough to beat Washington in Washington. All right. All right, so you got – yeah, Washington seems like it's all discombobulated right now. Um, so, I mean, especially with Haskins. I mean, maybe the, the coach is trying to just going to teach him a lesson. So you just need a week to not just worry about anything or two or three or four. And then you need to just watch the game and to shake him up. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I still think with all that being said, the Rams have enough. The defense is showing up a little bit. Um, they have a decent uh, committee um, at running back. And uh, they throw the ball a little bit. It's enough. It will be enough to beat Washington. Okay. Pop is going with the Los Angeles Rams. Um, Haskins is three and eight in his last 11 games. The backup quarterback playing at Carolina is only six. Do the math. Uh, it's not going to be good for Washington. Um, even though he knows that system, it's just not going to be good. I got to go with the Los Angeles Rams on that one. Next uh, game is the Las Vegas Raiders against the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City just came off a big win uh, against New England on Monday night. Black, who you got? This is a division game. Kansas City will get up for this one a little bit more than they got for the Patriots. I think they just kind of played enough just to get by the Patriots. And I think we're going to see that with Kansas City all year. I think there's certain teams and certain games they're going to kind of mark themselves up for, but they're pacing themselves for probably towards the end of the season. They're going to be up for this one, though. This one they're going to be up for. It's in the division. And um, they're, going to, they're going to smack the Raiders around. The Raiders kind of came back down to the ground. You know, Jude, John Gruden saying the same old dumb things he said before. But um, they're, going to, they're going to get punched them out pretty good with this. I'm taking their Chiefs with this one. All right. Ice, who you got? Where's the game at, please? Do you know? Wait, game is in Arrowhead, Kansas. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't matter if it was Las Vegas. They just would just uh, show them what it was like there, too. But Kansas City is, uh, as, as Black Thor mentioned, they didn't look great against New England. They almost looked sluggish. It was like, we really don't want to play this game to me. But uh, Gruden is coming in with this attitude. They have too many weapons. They just do. And, and I think uh, the Raiders are up and down. 
You don't know. And it's on the road. So that's going to be a problem for them. So uh, I, I look for Kansas City to keep sharpening uh, their skills. So I'm going to choose the Chiefs. All right. Uh, Pop is going with Kansas City also. I'm going with Kansas City too. I just uh, I, I said this a couple of weeks ago. The Raiders aren't as good as people think they are. I think they went 2-0, and 3-0, and and, and people were kind of tooting their horn. And I'm like, nah, they're, they're just not there anymore. They still make a lot of Raiders mistakes and things of that sort. So uh, – I hope nothing happens to Mahomes after hugging the uh, New England cornerback who just tested positive for COVID. I hope he still plays. But I'm going with Kansas City anyway. Um, next game on tap is Philadelphia at Pittsburgh. Black, who you got? Philadelphia stumbled and bumbled and won a game last weekend, but I'm not impressed, man. Pittsburgh got something going on. It's not a lot, but they got something going on. They're home. This is in a, basically in their backyard for the most part, playing another team in Pennsylvania. So, um, I'm going to take the Steelers with this, man. They got they, they got enough. And I think we're going to see the Eagles kind of come back to where they probably really are and see what they really float with it, which is not much. But I'm going to take the Steelers with this one. All right. Philly versus Pitt. Who you got, Ice? This will be a great opportunity for Philadelphia to kind of make a little run in their division because the division over there is just horrible. But uh, I don't see it. I mean, I'm not. I'm. I mean, I, I just say this. I am not really that impressed with Pittsburgh. I know everybody's jumping on them. I think when they play somebody worthwhile, we're gonna find out who the real Pittsburgh is. But they will have enough to win this game um, in the state of Pennsylvania. So I'm gonna take the Pittsburgh Steelers to win. All right, Pop is going with Pittsburgh. Um, I gotta go with Pittsburgh also on this. So it's Pittsburgh across the board. But didn't Pittsburgh play Houston? And played them close. It's a close game. game. Yeah. Houston, Houston should have won the game. Yeah. Okay. Won. Yeah. Why didn't they win? Huh? Why didn't they win? They made simple. They made simple mistakes. They went up uh, like two touchdowns, and they they faltered. Okay. All right. Next game on tap is Carolina at Atlanta. Is that, right, so you trying to say something? You trying to say something? No, I ain't trying. That's all I need to say. <laughs> Shoulda, woulda, coulda. They didn't. Uh, <laughs> Carolina at Atlanta. Like who you got? I'm going to ride this Carolina team, man. I, 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 there's no way I can close my eyes and pick the Atlanta Falcons. I don't care where they're playing. Man. I just don't get them. I just don't. I mean, they actually talked at the end of the game like they know they're going to beat Green back. I mean, the coach is like, I, I was reading some excerpt from the coach. He was, you know, there's some things we can correct. You ain't correct them in four weeks. <laughs> you ain't correct them in four weeks. Like, you just going to go back in the film study room and all man could be better. Carolina's playing some football, bro. They're punching you in the mouth. Chris McCaffrey is not there. They're showing, yeah, we love him, but we're not all about him. And they're, they're doing some things without him. They're, Bridgewater's slinging that ball around. They're looking good, bro. That defense is not bad. I, I think you said on a, a previous show, they have bought into what this coach is doing. They're bought in, and it shows in the field. Atlanta's a mess, man. Once you get to kind of, you know, chasing their tail, they're not going to beat you. So I'm taking the Panthers. All right. Uh, ice water, Carolina versus Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta's just, I can't do it. They have disappointed over and over. The Chicago game is just enough in itself. I, I don't know. They have had, They also had a number of injuries, too. Guys getting kind of beat up uh, off and on. But um, Carolina, like I said, they have not really excited me, but they'll do enough to win this game. Or, as you say, certain teams just get in their own way and they'll make mistakes. I think Atlanta will do that this week. So we're going to go with, uh, you know, with Carolina. See what's happening, folks? You got the twins here. They, they still just neck and neck, just going back and forth. Just <laughs> you can argue with good picking, baby. <laughs> back and forth. I think you can they, argue with good picking. I think they have a conversation before the show. I, I don't know, but I think they have a conversation before the show. But I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Do you, you think I'm going to pick – to make you feel good. <laughs> I'm taking the pick. So you can feel good. You crazy as hell. I'm trying to win. And I love you. I love you dearly. You are my brother from another mother. But if you want me to make you feel good, call me after hours and we can do some other things, get some drinks and stuff, or do talk about some other stuff. But it's not gonna be about these damn picks. <laughs> Touche. All right, Pop well, is, uh, he's picking the Carolina Panthers. I'm also going with Carolina, too. They, they won the last two. They seem to be gaining momentum. And Teddy Bridgewater seems to be locked in as the Carolina quarterback. And he's running the ball and doing all those things he was doing before he got injured a few years ago. I'm liking what I'm seeing in Carolina. 
Next game on tap is Buffalo at Tennessee. Black, what you got? I will say this, man. I this game may and may not happen. It's a possibility. I know it's, it's a possibility. I'm just saying, wait, what's going on with Tennessee? It's a possibility. I'm not sure. I, I might get postponed because you got to figure. I don't, you know, if this game, everything wouldn't happen with Tennessee, I think it would be a better game. But I think it's going to be tough for Tennessee to kind of respond and come back. They didn't play last week. They probably really didn't get a good practice in. If you know, some of these players got to be thinking, you know, what's going on? What's going to happen? Am I going to test whatever the case may be? So they, they have some distractions going on. Here come the Buffalo Bills basically clicking on a lot of good cylinders. And I think Buffalo's going to take this one, man. I'm going to take Buffalo win this. I would, I would love to see this game maybe played four or five weeks from now when Tennessee might have been a little stronger because I think this would have been an ultimate clash of um, two solid old-school type of football teams going at it. But with that being said, that's not the case. I'm taking the Buffalo Bills. All right. Um, all right, so you got? Yeah, when you have a number of uh, key players, I think they have a few key players on, on Tennessee that are, that are out. I think that's going to hurt them. And, uh, you know, the offense is going to try to move it along. But the other thing nobody's really talking about is Buffalo has a decent, a better than decent defense. You know, you look at the offense, but their defense is young. Even last year, they kind of came on strong at the end. So with that being said, and as long as Allen, he can continue to scare you to death, but keeps making plays, then uh, I think they're going to do okay. So I'm choosing Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, Pop is going with Buffalo. I'm going with Buffalo, too. Uh, Black, you mentioned about the, the time off. I don't know if this game is going to really happen, maybe postponed. And, um, man, it's like the fourth week is kind of like preseason week. So the first four games are like preseason to kind of get in shape and all that other stuff. And uh, Tennessee just haven't been able to, to get on board like everybody else in the league. So I got to go with Buffalo. They've been rolling. They've been rolling. And um, they're looking good. Got to go with them. Next game on tap is Arizona at the New York Jets. And Joe Flacco is coming back to play for the New York Jets. Flacco, you got? I mean, realistically, I mean, Joe Flacco should not be in the league anymore, bro. He stole enough money from Baltimore. Oh, I can't understand. Huh? Robbed him blind. Yes, he should not even be in the league anymore, man. It's just, this should be a law. He just can't put a, a football uniform on. And I'm not surprised this quarterback, this, I mean, this coach decided to sign him. I mean, the Jets are just, you know, the Jets and the Giants, man. I, I can't even, I don't even turn on local radio sports just to kind of listen to anything because I don't want to hear it. But um, I can't see how the Jets can win this game. I just can't. So, so I'm not taking them. I forgot. I, I started talking my head again. I forgot who they're playing. But I can't see. No, I'm the, I'm with you. But the Jets can't win this one. <laughs> they can't win this one. <laughs> They can't. They just can't. So um, who are they playing again? I'm sorry, bro. Arizona, man. Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Arizona on the road, but I like him on the road this weekend, man. I like him. I'm sorry about that because I got so I want to kind of get into the Jets, but I don't like Arizona on the road. And I swear, man, I know you put out. You put out. Um, I'm gonna say this real quick, man, because you just sent out a video of a coach complaining that we're real bad and this and that about a week ago. And it looked like the Arizona Cardinals football coach, but it wasn't. It was a college coach. And I thought it was him for a second. <laughs> I swear, because I said, man, there's no way he's ripping his team that bad on video. Could've, but it was just like Clinsbury was a but, um, but that being said, Arizona will do enough to win this game against. It may, it's going to be close, but Arizona will do enough to win this in, in the, at MetLife. Hopefully, nobody gets hurt with that, with that grass. Though. That's, the, that's the only question mark I have about this game. Who, who's hurt with the grass? I said, I'm hoping nobody gets hurt on that grass at MetLife. Yeah, they need, they need to change venues on that because yeah. there's many people getting hurt and uh, yeah. that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money the teams are wasting with their players yeah. on the injured reserve. Uh, Ice, who you got? Wow. Uh, Y'all yeah, watched the Jets first time and I was disappointed. I just don't know how you can be that bad, but then again, they kept making mistakes, opportunities to win, and they didn't make it happen. Arizona has kind of fallen back on what we thought they were going to be, but uh, they'll do enough. They'll do enough. Kyler Murray, the way that he uh, moves around and his mobility will allow them to win this game because uh, the Jets can't stop anybody. If you can't stop a rookie quarterback, third string or whatever the hell he was when they lost to Denver, there's no way in hell you're going to be able to stop Kyler Murray. So I'm going to go with Arizona. Yeah, uh, Papa's going with Arizona too. I saw the game last week with Denver and the New York Jets, and uh, Rippon was doing well in the first three quarters. I don't know what happened to him in the fourth quarter. He was like he was trying to throw away the game. Uh, in, in the uh, fourth quarter. And I remember seeing him at Boise State. And um, he was, he's a cool customer, in, 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 you know, in that pocket. 
I don't know what he was seeing. He was, it was almost like he was throwing it to the Giants players. Like he couldn't see his receivers and he was throwing it to the Giants players. Couldn't understand that. But um, Arizona needs to get back to basics. They need to get back to basics. Try, stop trying to, to, you know, with all the frills and, 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 and bells and whistles, get back to basics and play some football. If you do that and you don't make mistakes, you'll easily beat the Jets because their defense is undisciplined. Um, I don't know what the hell they're doing on offense. And as you said it last week, they really don't have receivers to throw it to. No. They don't have a running game. Uh, I don't know how they hung in there with Denver, uh, with, with all that being said. And I was looking for uh, Sam Donald to throw a couple of interceptions. Uh, maybe Flacco uh, will help me out this week. But um, Arizona, get back to basics. I'm picking Arizona. Next game on tap is Miami versus San Francisco. This was a tough one that, that uh, I had to kind of look at to pick. But uh, – I'll tell you what kind of pushed me over the edge for one team over the other. Uh, Black, who you got? Miami played very well last week, man, against Seattle. But they were at home. But they played very well. And that's the thing, too. If they was home taking this game with the 49ers, I would say because the 49ers aren't who they were last year, even if Jimmy G were there. They're just not the same team. You know, every year, they say a team that makes the playoff don't make it the following year. This year, the 49ers won't make the playoffs, in my opinion. I'm just going to go out and let them say that. They're not the same team. Um, but Miami, I think they're coming. It's going to take a little while, but you can see now that they're coming. They, they, they fight. They kind of play like their coach, man. He's tough. They play like him. They're tough-minded. They, they don't – the old Miami team, when they got down seven points before and gave up, they were just kind of basically – they'd have walked off the field, but the uniforms have still been out there playing, but they would have kind of walked off in spirit with their toughness. But this is not – that's not the same Dolphins. So they're coming, but I don't think they're going to travel across country to San Fran, Santa Clara, I think they play in California – and have enough for four quarters to really take away 49ers. I'm going to go with the 49ers. All right. All right, so you got? Yeah, that, that's a long way to go. Uh, also, too, uh, we saw the fist magic for a while. It's about time for fist tragic to show up. <laughs> 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 well, he, can't, he just can't keep rolling along like he's having a great game. Sooner or later, you know, he's going to run out of gas, and uh, it might be coming up soon. And San Francisco still, even though they lost a lot of players, uh, still can do a decent, have provide a decent effort on defense. So uh, it'll be enough. But uh, as Blackthorne mentioned, I like Miami. I like them from the beginning when they make some off-season moves. May not be this year, but down the line, if they keep playing the way that they are and making good decisions, I think they're going to be a team to, to reckon with uh, down the line. All right. Uh, Pop takes the home team, San Francisco. Uh, I was looking at both teams because Miami is coming – uh, San Francisco has a lot of guys that injured, but I was looking at the injury report and there are a number of players that were injured that are scheduled that are even questionable coming back in this game, the running back Garofalo and some other folks off the defense. So uh, that kind of swayed me back towards San Francisco uh, with this particular game, especially playing at home. You get, you don't have to be out on the road, um, going to different hotel rooms, hustling and bustling. So um Hopefully some of those players off that injury list will come back in this game and San Francisco will look like the team we saw last year. So I'm going with San Francisco in this game. Uh, next game on tap black is Denver versus New England. Who you got? Ooh. Wow. Um, no, I'm going to take New England. Denver is a shell of himself, man. I mean, John, it was got to be one of the worst general managers ever <laughs> of any professional team sport. And that's, and that's being modest. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take New England. New England has a way basically the system to keep prevailing and they're gonna show up. There's gonna be some guys not there, some guys will be wearing masks, whatever. But this system will allow who they put on the field to kind of play well and they're gonna they're not even gonna need much to beat to beat, beat this team, beat the Broncos. I'm taking the Patriots. All right. All right, so you got yeah, Denver against the Jets. It was like if the Jets made two decent more plays or just not messed up, they could have won that game. Denver, they, it's, it's, it's scary over there, scary. So with Belichick um, running things with New England, even though they don't have – may not have the Cam back, I don't think he will be back. But you got James White back. They already found ways to make plays. And then the defense, too, will probably make some plays as well. So I think it will be enough for them to win the game. So New England. All right. Pop is taking the home team, New England. I'm going with New England, too. It's kind of scary. Uh, I don't know who's going to play quarterback, but New England uh, has a high-powered running game. They need to rely on the run game a lot more in this game and uh, keep Denver off the field or bruise up their defense in order to pull this one out in Foxborough, uh, going with New England. Next game on tap 
is Indianapolis versus Cleveland. This should be a pretty decent game. I, I, you know, I hate to say it, but it should be. Uh, Black, who you got? No, you're right. It, it should be. And, and this one, of all the games this week, this one kind of just kind of, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. And I probably will take a loss with this one because if Cleveland just will find a way, I know I think um, Chubb is hurt. Yeah. But if they would just rely on Hunt and just keep pounding with Hunt and every now and then take a shot, they may have a chance to win this game. They'd be close because the, the, the Colts have a pretty good defense for the most part. I don't trust their quarterback. But I think what's going to happen with, with um, Cleveland after they beat the Cowboys and they score so much, they're going to try to do that with, with the Colts. That's not going to work. It's just not going to work. They're going to try to sling it around, and they're going to force um, that quarterback Mayfield into some errors, some mistakes, and the Colts will take it. So I'm gonna t- for that reason alone, I'm going to take the Colts. I just think their coach is much more savvier. You know, he finds a way within a game to win games more so than his coach on the Cleveland Browns has left to understand and learn. So I'm going to take the Colts with this one. All right, Ice, what you got? Yeah, Cleveland felt real good last week. You can't blame them. I mean, it is what it is. They, they got what felt everybody's, you know, look at our record now. They start believing that hype again. But Indianapolis, even with their, their kicker, their four-eyed kicker, he's still, he's still, they're a very quirky team, man. But the defense comes along. They find ways. They have a great young uh, running back, uh, is it Taylor? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they are just, they, they just do enough. And, and the defense will put pressure on Baker Mayfield. And I think they're going to win the game. So I'm going to go with Indianapolis. Yeah. Uh, Pop is going with Indianapolis also. Uh, got a chance to watch the game against Indianapolis and Chicago. And um, Indianapolis put on the show defensively. And I was impressed. And um, I think they can get to Baker Mayfield. I think they can rattle him. Uh, I don't think they're going to let um, Odell Beckham. I don't know what the Cowboys are doing to Odell Beckham, but he seems to have their number. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't Everybody know. got the number. Everybody. They, they weren't trying to tackle him. They were just letting him run all around. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Did he smell? I, I don't know. They just they Everybody. Were, Everybody on that team caught a pass. Yeah. Everybody. I mean, you had the wide receiver throw Landry throwing it to, to Beckham. I'm like, you know, what, what are you doing? You didn't see that? The safety back there, that's what you're supposed to be watching for. But, um, yeah, I'm going with Indianapolis, too. I just, I, you know, I just uh, saw that defense last week, and I'm like, man, these guys are coming to play. And uh, Black mentioned the defense last week about you saying the number one against the run. Yeah. Uh, and then you're, you, Chubb is not there, and you got yeah. one running back. Ugh, no, that's not looking good. That's not looking good. So I got to go with Indianapolis coming in to Cleveland and, and beat them. Uh, Next game on tap is the New York Giants versus Dallas. This game used to mean something back in the day. It don't mean anything these days. Only only problem I have with this game is why are you making this game a 4 o'clock game? I'm sorry. Put on 1 o'clock. Get it out the way. Get it over (laughs) with. I mean, the NFL should be be smarter than that. I mean, you know the Giants aren't that good. Why make a big part of the country sit through and watch this? And I know a big part of the country are Cowboy fans. I will say this, though. The Cowboys are going to – I'm going to take the Cowboys, and the Cowboys are going to win this game. And then their heads are going to get big and think they're back in it. For some reason, they're going to think they're back in the playoff run. They're going to think they're good. And the following week, I'm not sure they're going to play. But if they play a decent team the following week, they're going to get spanked. But this week, they'll beat the Giants, and they're going to run around and act like everything is all done, everything is well, they're back, and this and that. But that team has a lot of problems, man. And it's so funny because I'll listen to some different commentators talk, and they made a lot of interesting points. They said that what's really one of the biggest problems with the Cowboys, everybody that's gotten paid is not showing up. And Zeke is one of them. I know they say Zeke is not getting the ball enough. But think about since Zeke got that contract, he hasn't been eating a lot, bro. They, they talked about Lawrence. A lot of these cats that Jerry Jones has played are playing subpar. And the only one that hasn't gotten his money that's out there really doing something is Dak Prescott. It is something to think about because, man, it, as a team, it's just amazing how they just bumble and bumble the first two quarters, and then they want to rally. They didn't have to bumble this week because they're going to beat the Giants easily. All right. Um, Ice, what do you got? Yeah, it's not something that you really look forward to watching, but that's for sure. But uh, somebody has to win. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to choose Dallas. But I think they might be able to get up for it because they're going to see Jason Garrett on the other side. <laughs> on the sideline. <laughs> and it's like, okay, we can't lose to him. <laughs> X Factor. 
That's can't a lose, factor right there. You can't lose to him, and, and they're going to find a way for to do it, especially when you they're, they're going to be running. The other thing that might help the Dallas Cowboy, I mean, the Dallas Cowboy offense, defense off, is the fact that they're going to be running the same plays that the Cowboys <laughs> So the the Giants offense will be predictable. We just hope that Nolan, the defensive coordinator, can just go back to the, the old files and find those papers. Cause I promise you, they're gonna run the same damn plays that Dallas ran last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh Pop picked Dallas. You didn't I don't even think he wanted to pick Dallas, but he picked Dallas. And uh this this game is gonna remind me, um, first of all, the X Factor with the coach. Uh, that's going to be kind of key. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm picking Dallas, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants win this game. But it reminds me of the old uh, Little Rascals uh, episode where uh, Porky and uh, Buckwheat were in the ring and they were hitting each other. It's like, you lay down. No, you lay down. You lay down. No, you lay down. That's what it reminds This whole division reminds me of that. Nobody yeah. wants to win this division. No. <laughs> Nobody wants to win this no. division. And it's sad. If the division is there to take, and none of these teams are stepping up and saying, you know what, this could be our year to take this division, get in the playoffs. Let's, that should be a motivating factor. This is an easy division to win. Let's take this division. And none of these teams are stepping up to take it. It's just the saddest thing you ever want to see. And this is one of these divisions you look forward to back in the day to watch. But they, it's just sad to see how they just kind of just come down to this particular point where they're like the laughing stock of the NFL. Can I put that one point in there? Yeah. I'm going to just say this. This is how sad this division is to me this year. Even Ron Rivera think they got a chance to win it. Yeah. He yeah. might have changed the quarterback. They're so sad. He might have changed the quarterback, hoping yeah. that they can improve in time to make a run. Yeah. And what is their record? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Won one game. I think uh, Dallas is in third place. They won one game. Uh, I think Philly is in first. Um, they won one game and tied one game. It's like this is this is this is really sad. Mm -hmm. It's really sad. Uh, next game on tap is the Minnesota Vikings versus the Seattle Seahawks. Like who you got? Seattle needs to bounce back, bounce back, baby. Even though Miami played them tough, they 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 showed some serious vulnerability against the, against the Dolphins. And um, one thing that Minnesota did last week in the win, they could have lost that game, but they they they're getting back to the running game. Kirk Cousins did look good, but I don't trust them two weeks in a row. But they're getting back to the running game and just kind of basically slamming it at you. And Seattle does not have a good run defense. They don't. But I think that Russell's going to play beyond himself because he kind of fell out of the talk at MVP this past week. He knows that he kind of fell down. Not anybody says it's taking his place. But in order to keep that MVP talk, MVP talk going, you got to every week you got to show up and got to do something spectacular. He will this weekend. I'm taking Seattle. All right. Ice, uh, you have Minnesota going to Seattle to play the Seattle Seahawks. Who you got? Yeah. On the road, it's going to be very difficult for the Vikings to do something. Even though they have the, that running game, um, at some point, Seattle will try to make it turn into a track meet. And I'm not sure if Minnesota can hang with that. So um, Russell Wilson, a couple of deep balls, DK Metcalf, and even got uh, uh, Olsen, the tight end from uh, Carolina catching pass. Yeah. So that being said, um, I think they, they, they were not sharp last week. They're going to come back in their home. I think they'll have, even though it, even though there's no fans, I think they're going to prove to Minnesota um, that they're they're better. And the factor that, uh, like you said earlier, you know, Kirk Cousins can he give it can he be great two weeks in a row? I don't think so. Yeah, um, Pop is going with Seattle. He loves the 12th man at home. He always picks Seattle at home. Um, I think it's bad, Kirk Cousins, this week. I really do. <laughs> it's been good, good cousin the last couple of weeks, but he, he he can only get hot for a couple of games, and then he goes right back to the, to the old Kirk cousin. So I'm going with Seattle at home. Also, uh, a lot of people are talking also about Aaron Rodgers for that MVP quarterback. Nobody's been talking about him, but he's been slowly but surely getting into that conversation of MVP. And um, you got Russell, you got Mahomes. Yeah, I can see it. It's going to be a race down to the last uh, game. All right, Monday night game, Los Angeles Chargers versus the New Orleans Saints. Black, who you got? It's Monday night or Sunday night game? Uh, Monday night. Okay. I thought that might have been Monday. All right. Um, the Saints and the Chargers. 
Chiefs. Things are just kind of barely getting it done, bro. They're barely getting it done, but the Chargers aren't ready to really kind of step up. Their quarterback is good. I like their rookie quarterback. I like what they're doing, but if this game was in L.A., I'm, I would go with the Chargers. But being that it's going to be um, in the Dome in Mercedes Stadium, yeah. Char the Saints are quicker at home. Um, the, the running back will have a bigger game, and I'm going to take the Saints. All right. Ice, who you got? I think I'm going to roll with the Saints as well. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Chargers has just lost their running back. Or, or, uh, was it what is Eckler? Is Eckler running back or is it a tight end, a wide receiver? Austin Eckler. That's, that I have to check. Okay. But the receiver. Receiver. The receiver. The receiver. The receiver. Yeah. However, but, yeah, he, he – when they lost a key component, he might be done for the year. And, and they're going to need all the weapons they can, particularly with that young quarterback. New Orleans is not great. They take plays off. Take, I mean, they're off and on, but I think they'll have enough and on to win this game because they'll probably just put the ball down on the ground because they know deep down inside that hopefully it's going to happen this week. You probably won't. But maybe next week is uh, – or I think they have a bye. But whenever they return, Michael Thomas will probably be back, and they need him desperately. But I think they have enough to win in this game. Yeah. Uh, Pop is going with New Orleans in this game. Um, I'm also going with New Orleans in this particular game. Uh, I like the quarterback Herbert from the Chargers, but I think he's going to start seeing, like, different defenses that people got to pay for him now. I'm, I'm going to go with that New Orleans defense and that, that secondary. Um, and um, see if they can twist them up a little bit. So I'm going with New Orleans. So said are... that three weeks ago, man. He's been balling against every defense he's been playing. Yeah, he's been winning. <laughs> he's been winning. balling, though. He's been balling. He's been balling, bro. That's all I'm saying. I, I hear you, but you keep waiting for the wheels to fall. He's the real deal, bro. He's the oh, real I, I have no deal. doubt he's the real deal, but he's a rookie. And rookies tend to make mistakes. So, you know, teams aren't going to play the same way all the time and, and let you keep balling out. And so, I mean, you're getting paid to defend. You're going to be watching tape on him. You're going you're gonna to get his weak spots. You'll get him. Okay. All right, fellas. Uh, we'll post these up. And um, good luck, but not so much. Um, so I think we're only, all of us are only different on one game. I only picked the, the, the upset of the week. Uh, but uh, it's going to be too much. Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh, they better not win. Ooh, they win. Ooh. Hey, hey, you you, you said the same thing about the Bears last week. Oh, man. <laughs> Get, the Bears. Get the Cowboys, the Bears, the Giants. I, I don't even want to talk about them, though. Oh, man. All right. We will see you next week on the first 40 on Monday. Peace. Peace out. Peace out. Uh, I think I think Ice was right the first time. I think Aguilar, I think he is a running back for the for the for the, for the charge, if I'm not mistaken. I think he is. I said receiver, but I think he is a running back. All right, any other thoughts, man? Uh NFL? Black? I'm gonna say this, man. Overall, man, with no preseason. Everything they're battling, they're putting a good product on the field for the most part, bro. I mean, minus the Jets, Giants, and maybe a couple other teams, they're putting a very good product on the field. I mean, look at Cincinnati starting to come. Look at the Dolphins are really playing good football. I mean, Cleveland, they even they're, they're making it exciting. So you have a lot of teams out there that are making some noise and makes it interesting to basically, you know, watch these different teams play and try to hustle and get some wins. So even Detroit, man, even Detroit um, last week played a pretty good game. It looked different. And they're battling. And I don't know if um, – are they playing this week? Because we didn't, we didn't pick them, bro. I'm not no, sure. No, uh, Detroit's not playing and somebody else not playing. I think Green Bay, yeah. too. Green Bay. The Green Bay and Detroit. I yeah. Think. Oh, that's who's not playing. Okay. I didn't pick them. Yeah. And you're right, too, man, about Aaron Rodgers. Quiet. Everybody's talking about him. But Aaron Rodgers is cutting it up, bro. And everybody yelled and screamed, he need a receiver. He's throwing to somebody in the stands. Actually, somebody – they got the Mikolo stuff that's not even playing, bro. He is cutting everybody up, bro. But Aaron Rodgers, to me, I love him. But there's some part of the season we just tapers off. And that's going to be interesting to see. Because I know you always have him for fantasy. He'll taper off for like three or four games and just kind of just like go real cool. And if he does that, that will kill him in every retalk. I don't think they want to give it to Mahomes this year. He's got a place for tackler because you've seen, it, you've seen this train already, bro. So I'm not sure they're going to give it to him again. Yeah. Um, 
I was uh, laughing at Aaron Rodgers because they have a camera at, in the end zone, and uh, he threw a touchdown pass um, uh, the last game, and everybody's flexing, and he comes running up last real slow and start flexing in the camera like that. <laughs> you never really see Aaron Rodgers do that, but I thought that was funny. Uh, the other thing is, I was uh, listening to Tony Kornheiser Ice about um, he's still hot about the Green Bay Packers picking a, a quarterback in the draft, and I think it was a smart move by Green Bay because he was naming, um, you know, Kansas City didn't pick a quarterback, uh, the Ravens didn't pick a quarterback. He was naming all these young quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers is not <laughs> that young, and so they're they're looking for the future and trying to keep this train rolling. And they didn't say the guy was going to come in and, and start against Aaron Rodgers. And they keep talking to Aaron Rodgers, and he was like, you know, I'm cool with it. I'm cool. We're playing football. He's a nice guy. We're teammates. You know, I'm cool with it. I don't know why everybody's still upset about the Green Bay Packers picking a quarterback with Aaron Rodgers in it. It's a business. This is what teams do to try to keep the train rolling. Yeah. You know, I think, I think you're right, and it's their business. But I think what happens is – they were looking for this team to flounder for that reason. They thought Aaron Rodgers was going to go left. It was going to do well. And in spite of that, they show, if anything, they show what they know what they're doing, bro. Like you said, they, they're going for the future. They know what they have in the house. I would even now looking back, man, I think they need to tune that defense up a little bit. But no, Aaron Rodgers probably got another good three, four years on him. And he's going to be right in a Green Bay uniform. They're not going to let him go before his time. And he, he's, until he starts to really start to play bad, he ain't going. He's not going anywhere. No. He's not going anywhere. Why should that? If, when would Devontae come back? Come on. That offense is going to – you think it's clicking now. Wait till he comes back. Ice? Yeah. Um, I mean, I see that. I think, though – and I know they're talking about the future, but I think what you did, what they did is they when they when they picked a love or whatever, um, uh, then Rodgers used that as fuel, man. He got pissed off. And he said, I'm going to show y'all what he's capable of doing. I mean, he just kind of looked at the roster and said, I really could use some help, but I'm not. I don't have it. And y'all can think you're going to bring this quarterback in here. I'm going to lay down. No, he's not doing that. So he's showing you. And I think that's why he has more antics this year, kind of showing y'all. He even talked about 2019. Y'all said, I wasn't good enough, my stats and all this other crap. So he's like, look, y'all, I'm showing y'all again this year. So he's stepping his game up. So it's like he doesn't care who's on this squad right now. He's balling out. But, uh, I mean, you can say that, but – I'm going to say this. If he's going to be there in three more years, they might want to get somebody else to help him uh, when he can throw that damn ball to. I understand the future, but you can't keep riding the, the wide receivers that you're doing for the next three years if you want to continue to win. All I'm saying is sometimes you have to help your quarterback. There's nothing wrong in the next couple of years throwing the ball, finding somebody else he can throw to, making his life a little easier, maybe allowing them to win more games and taking the lead. Because last year, they, they did it with smoke and mirrors. You had, it was always about, what was it, Jones and Adams. Jones, Adams, that's all it was. Jones, Adams all day long. And sooner or later, the, even though they were 13 and three, the wheels fell off, the, off, that, off that train. They fell off because and when they got to that point, they could not execute. They beat Seattle, and then they just couldn't get it done. So no disrespect to that, but I'm just saying down the line, so you got your future quarterback. How about getting the man a little help? to make it easier for him on offense. That's all I'm saying. Any other thoughts about the NFL? Uh, when you look at this this standpoint, it, I think it's going to be interesting to see how the NFL comes up with uh, how many uh, uh, how many fans they're going to let in. Because I know they're letting, trying to let a little bit in at a time, people fighting and stuff like that too. So they're trying to get their money back. But at the same time, it's like, do you really want to do that? But people are hungry. People are very hungry. And I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna throw this, I'm gonna throw this way over here. We're looking at baseball. I clown baseball early on. But baseball is like they the NFL's what they're both watching each other. Baseball opened the door so they're gonna allow the world people to come to the World Series that's gonna be in Texas, they brand new stadium, and also in the uh, national uh, championship series. They sold eleven thousand tickets. Sold out. Mm. Sold out. Only at seventy-five dollars a piece, but still sold out. People are hungry. NFL knows that. I think they're gonna hold, just keep holding on in the as they get closer and closer and they get to the playoffs. If they decide to do a bubble thing, then they're gonna open some things up. They're gonna make it where they're gonna feed their audience. They're gonna feed them. But I think right now they kind of quit keeping that stranglehold on them, right? Then they're gonna let loose and people just gonna come in and spend their money, man. They love 
And Black Thor said, people love NFL football. You know, when you put an NBA basketball uh, uh, conference final on a Sunday and they make it at one o'clock, <laughs> it's telling you who's the big dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when they put the end of this uh, conference final at one o'clock and they still run through the NFL, NFL, like, nah, you do what you want to. It's kind of like you might as well be a WNBA, no disrespect. You might as well be a WNBA. You ain't still moving, man. <laughs> Black, you still got your, uh, your, your ticket? No, I man, I had I had to kind of let that go, bro, because it's it's just what got me, man, was just flying right now. What came down to it, I, I just said you decided not to. But I, I like the idea of what baseball did in a sense with the seventy-five dollar ticket. That right there is marketing genius, bro. That right there, because like you said, people want to be a part. Don't charge them full price. Give them something back for just coming out and being participating. That's beautiful, man. To to go to a World Series or a playoff game for seventy five dollars, come on. That right there is just, that's, I love that. I, I like that whole idea. That was smart. Real smart. All right, party shots, Black. Whoo, man. I'm going to say congratulations to Seattle Storm. I know a lot of times this is going a little different, but this is a team I was speaking on the other night, man, that um, look at Sue Berg, 39 years old. Brianna Stewart took off last year due to injury, and they just find a way, man, to come together. They put the Eagles aside, put everything aside and they just play basketball. So congratulations to them. I know the Aces probably take it hard with the loss, but you lost to a superior team, and no matter, it's no reason to feel bad about that. So congratulations to them, man. They're, um, when everything we look at WNBA basketball and find things not wrong with it, when you watch Seattle Storm play, you find a lot of good things to, to root for. Party shots, Black. I mean, Ice. Yeah, we, we got over here looking with these picks, and we have a good time. But I'm going to give you all a tip. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're on boxing, your boxing fan needs to get ready. You got some great fights coming up. You got Lopez versus Lomachenko. Uh, you got uh, down the line in, in November, Garcia versus uh, Errol Spence. And then uh, also you have um, you have uh, Devante, da Devante Davis uh, versus Leo Santa Cruz. And these are most of them are going to probably be without fans. But if you want to see some quality boxing, turning around like that. And I think now they just also announced that we're going to get uh, uh, Terrence Crawford versus, uh, 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 what is it, Kell Brook. So, yeah, it's about that time for things to turn around before the end of the year. All right. My party shot is, might have spoke too soon about Jimmy, Jimmy Butler. Might have spoke too soon after last night's game. Might have spoke too soon. He went five for five. Then they put the defense on them. If you're a superstar, if you're a player looking for big money, this is the time to shine. And you went, what, one wait, one for seven? <laughs> Next, seven. No, come on, bro. Right. Come on, bro. Oh come on, bro. Come on. You're talking all that stuff. You got to bring it. This is the final. This is the major stage right here. This is it. This is championship. This is for the money. If you don't care about, if you don't care about nothing but winning, you're supposed to find a way. I don't care who you're playing with. But, uh, yeah, he turned back to the Jimmy I used to see at the Bulls, throwing the ball to everybody else and not taking charge. Take charge, man. You want to beat a man, you got to beat the man. Go ahead. Say something, Mike. Say something. Say something. I'm going to say something, something. Now, look. First of all, <laughs> all I'm saying is the man can have dropped 40. They series would have been – they, they would have got swept. Let's be real. They want to get more. They want to get more. They drop forty, and drop then he more. I'll, I'll get that. But you can't penalize him for one game. They're in the finals. They, they nobody. You, you, you talked about Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler. You, he ain't supposed to be there, according to you and other and other people. He ain't supposed to be there. Miami he ain't got no superstar. You according to everybody else. They there. I'm gonna say this one thing. I'm gonna get off of it, and I'm gonna pull, get my, one more drink. Uh, <laughs> so now I can get back to it but here we go you must know there's one thing Jimmy Butler made the finals with the Heat right there's one team that's not there and everybody loves him it's a man that won the two time MVP in Milwaukee where they at oh, okay I know I know I know all I'm, all I'm saying is to you my brother don't penalize him for one game. 
They're in the finals. Nobody thought they was going to be there. I told my brother this a long time ago. He said, why didn't you tell me this a while back? I could have made some money. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, because it was 60 to 1 about them going to the finals. Right. 60 to 1. But all I'm saying is we, we talk about Giannis and how great he is, and, and, and he is a great player. But you have to learn how to be, show leadership and play together. One thing Jimmy Butler has done, he may not be the greatest player. He may not be the top guy. He might disappoint you from time to time. But wherever he's went from Chicago, even in Chicago, they made the playoffs. They made the playoffs. He went to Minnesota. You do the whole thing. Now you move to Philadelphia. Philadelphia is crying. And Beats like, please, I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I'm sorry. You even got Giannis talking about trying to come to Miami. Did you hear about that? He's trying to find a way. I'm here, Paul George with the Knicks. Oh, please, Nick, don't. But, but, yeah. I'm, but I'm just saying from the standpoint of don't just throw, don't don't slam Jimmy, man, after one game. Come on now. He's playing. He played hell. He's playing. He got him in the finals. Get a man a break. I know you. I know you want him to rise up and do everything. It's a lot of people that have underachieved. I think he's done a great thing getting them to the finals, and they won one game. And maybe they can learn from it if they don't win. I think it's over. But don't don't do Jimmy like that, man. Don't, first you was out. You giving him love when he dropped forty. I, I did give him love did because he, I saw something. Play. I saw something, and I saw that aggressiveness, and I saw that the Lakers couldn't handle it. But once the like the Lakers turned up the heat, no pun intended, uh, he faded back. He, he was not a, that aggressive, and you can't be that way if you want to be the man. You can't. You got to go right after him just as much. As, and he said it the, the day before, like, we got to come harder. Yeah, you got to come harder. You score 40, yeah, do it again. Okay. Score 30. And they said that before the game. You got to score. He got to score 30 for them to even have a chance. And he has to be aggressive. And he backed down. And you had your boy on the rope. AD was trying to get out the game, bro. He was trying to get out the game. And he let him back in. LeBron hit him up the side, the chest for a few. And then he got back in the game and got some heart, pumped some heart, pumped some blood in his heart. And then Jimmy kind of just faded back and less aggressive. You can't do that in the final. I'm sorry. This is for the championship. I'm sorry. There is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow on this. I give you that, brother. But all I'm saying is a lot of dudes. All I'm going to point to your boy Giannis. He's supposed to be all this. I know he got hurt. He's supposed to have all this. He's supposed to be a leader. I, I'm just saying. I, and for as much as I know what you're saying about Jimmy Butler, it is his time. He's supposed to rise. Is he disappointing at a certain point? Yes. But I'm telling you, that's just me. He, he, he's come from a long way. He's given all he has. And the Lakers, you know, they, they winning. I do think he's – the problem I do have, too, and I think – I don't know if the coach told him this or not. But I, I will agree with the point later in the in the uh, game. He started passing the ball too much. Yeah. yeah you yeah. you had you had guys like none taking shots, and I'm sitting there going, no "What the hell are you doing?" Yeah. And, and my thing is, and, and if and, and if he's pulling back like you said, and I agree he was, I'm that coach because I want you to win too. Yo, man, I don't care if you miss, shoot, shoot the damn ball. I don't care because, and I told my brother this last night. When you have these shooters, the heroes, and what is the other kid, Johnson, they looking real good. And whoever it was, the Robinson, whatever the name is, they shooting and they when they own, they own. But when it get tight and it's hot, like yesterday, they were missing shots and they were literally defensive liabilities. What is it? Ken Caldwell Pope? Man, he went by on boy like, what? What? Yeah. What? And then when uh uh when your hero was went to the rack. Trying to score the layup, he going all timid. I mean, they're great at times, but it to me it shows you the difference between experience and and immaturity. They just have not been there, and they and they getting tight, and they know it. You got Rondo, you got uh, uh, Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis and LeBron is like this. Yeah, you got yeah. like lieutenant. Yeah. They sitting there like we don't give a damn. They are gonna have to go get somebody else because this ain't enough. And when they get on that little thing right there. They ain't losing, man. They ain't losing. And I ain't, I'm not trying to be funny, but their mindset is like, when Caldwell Pope is the leading scorer early on your squad, and they just falling back and they still winning games, you in trouble. Yeah. You in trouble. Black, here, here, here's what you're going to see if you watch the next game. Lakers going to wear their Kobe black jerseys, and they're going to try to finish this series up. And it's going to be about all Kobe, all Black Lives Matter, all of this stuff that they, they're going to use their platform 
we won this championship not only for us, but blah, 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 blah. I'll, 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 um, I'll, I'll say to LeBron now, congratulations, but listen to you two go at it and what just jumps out at me. I think as commentators, I think what we do here, I mean, everybody can choose their own words. To me, when you don't show up consistently at key moments, you don't deserve to have the title great. You just don't. Anybody could be good for a night or a game, whatever, but you got to find a way, the great ones, find a way when the oven is hot to show up and get it done. And you just have to, man. And, and I think a lot of times now we, we look at the NBA and it's very few players you can look at. You can look at Harding. He doesn't live up to it. There's a lot of players that are they are regular season phenomenons. They are. But when you get them to the playoffs, they, they'll give you a good game and they disappear. They disappear. And that's one thing I'll give LeBron credit for. He does find a way to basically be consistent when he needs to be in strong moments. And that sets him apart. But the NBA – doesn't have that. I mean, there was players that can play that way. They don't. Even Anthony Davis, you you know, as, as much as I respect him, I'm not going to respect this championship that he's getting. Because realistically, to me, you get this LeBron jock. Let's be honest. It's just it's just the way I'm always going to see it. You you get this, this championship on LeBron's jock, and if you want to have it, that's fine. Because he still shows you from night to night. And like you said, I didn't even watch, but you text me. He's looking to get out of the game. He doesn't have that greatness pill inside of him, bro. And a lot of them don't because what happens with the NBA, they make so much money so soon when they come in, their head gets big and they don't fight it. They don't get that hunger. They really don't. And that's what you see. You see one night you do good and soon as we put some defense on you, run away. So I just think that we have to kind of, and we go watching great basketball players, great basketball players. Isaiah Thomas said what you want about him. He would turn it on when it's necessary to do what he had to do. I can go on and on and on. I can't do that with these current day players. Like you said about Greek Freak, you got to be kidding me. I mean, he's showing you time and time again in the playoffs, he will dissolve like an alka pill. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's what, you know, maybe I, I spoke too soon on Jimmy. I still have a uh, newfound respect for it, but you got to give me that. If you know your team needs you, you even text me. Like, what is none doing with the ball? What is he doing in the game? What is he doing in the game? Give the ball to Jimmy. They were doing it all. Give the ball to Jimmy. Go to work. Get fouled. Be aggressive. Do what you got to do to to put your team on your back. Uh, You got your big guy there. You got, you know, other people are fighting with you. They go by how you go. And if you start throwing the ball around and not being aggressive, you saw everybody else started clamming up. They go at the pace that Jimmy goes. And if he's clamming up, the rest of the team clams up. And when he was being aggressive that night before, everybody was being aggressive. Everybody was getting into it. And he has to know that he has the temperature of that team. And how he goes, the team goes. And that's what the leaders realize. LeBron does the same thing. If he's lacking, the team lacks. It's the same thing. It's almost like, oh, it's like you got the biggest dude you're rolling with, and he gets knocked out. And you go, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> he knocked out the best guy. Out. Oh, 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 oh. Let's talk about this. Oh, 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 oh. You know. <laughs> so that's all I'm saying. I still respect him as a player. I still think he's going to get a max contract. But that one game shouldn't give him a max contract. And I know he's done it in the bubble and all that other stuff. But um, that that was always my. Um, criticism of him that consistently he ain't the guy. He ain't the guy. And they need, I think what's going to happen is after this season, you're going to see some some um, free agents wanting to go to Miami. Wanting to go to Miami. That's going to be the hotbed right there. Yeah. That's going to be the hotbed. They're going to want to play in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. 